Hi everyone, Mark Cavan is here. Thanks for clicking on to another Alfred Sacred Jubilate Music digital reading session. And let me thank just a moment to thank you for clicking on to these digital reading sessions. We have a lot of fun uh, making them for you and we've gotten some great feedback that they're helping you select music and that's why we're here. And we're here today with Lee and Susan Dingler from Indiana. Welcome, Lee and Susan. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm Thanks. great. Good to see you both, too. And thanks for taking your time to talk about your first ever children's musical, The In Crowd. That's I-N-N, -N, The In Crowd. Talk about this musical, you guys. How did it come about? And uh, what's the premise? Well, we're very excited about this musical, and we had so much fun putting it together. Um, well, the Bible tells us that the inn was full when Joseph and Mary arrived. And that made us think about who might have been staying at the inn and how they may have interacted with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds when they arrived. We think the title, The Inn Crowd, is interesting because of its double meaning. Uh, the musical is about people who stayed at the inn who considered themselves to be privileged because they got to stay in the inn while they felt that the others, namely Mary and Joseph and the shepherds who had to stay outside, were not part of the inn crowd. What they all discovered was that because of Jesus' birth, everyone was and is welcome to be part of the in crowd. And we really think this is a message that is important, especially for children who often have to deal with issues of peer pressure and fitting in. And it's our hope that in this retelling of the Christmas story, that children and all of us who know that we are all invited to be part of Jesus' family. Absolutely. That is, I love it. And I remember when you guys first told me the premise, I thought, now that is different. That is unique. That is fresh. And as publishers and writers, we always are thinking, how can we tell the greatest story ever told with a new angle? And, and I so agree, you guys, that um, that message, of course, the, the, the message of Jesus' birth is at the core of the musical. And yet, mm -hmm the idea that, that we're all part of the in crowd and, and that we're all accepted and we're all loved. Uh, those are exactly very important messages for especially children to learn at an early age to be accepting of each other and welcoming. And you're right, a whole lot of us adults need to hear that as well too always. Sure. So uh, so let's let's talk about each one of the songs if we could for just a minute. Of course, there's the the little overture, which is very very brief, that gives the kids a moment to come on in and get ready to sing and all that stuff, and sets the kind of the pace that segues immediately into "Come On In." Talk about that opening song. Well, this starts out with the innkeeper uh, singing or speaking; it's optional. Uh, a welcome to all the guests who have arrived. And uh, the, the guests gradually join in the singing of this song, and they, they talk about uh, the, some of the reasons why they have come to the inn uh, to be counted, to be part of the census and part of the taxation. So it, it, it sort of explains why everyone has arrived here at, in Bethlehem. Absolutely. Then it moves to Star of Wonder. Talk about Star of Wonder, Susan. Well, Star of Wonder is the ballad in the musical. It's a beautiful melody. Uh, the guests are remarking about this amazing star that is up in the sky. Uh, the words contain prophecy about Jesus coming, and while the song is going on, Mary and Joseph enter. Oh, and another thing I love about that one, it has a, a very nice Advent feel about it as well. It does. Yeah, beautiful minor mode. Then, in or out, what's that all about? Well, this is a fun song that, uh, in a way, shows some of the arrogance of some of the guests who are staying in the inn. Uh, during the song, the shepherds show up, and uh, who are looking rather shabby, and uh, the song gets into the interchange between those two groups. Absolutely. And then next, Good News. Good News is a fun gospel style, very upbeat, and it's telling the story about the angels' visitation to the shepherds and bringing the good news of Jesus' birth, and it contains fragments of the carol angels we have heard on high. Oh, and I love the way you guys did weave some carol snippets and full carols into the musical. It's always great to hear kids sing Christmas music at Christmas. Imagine that. And so, uh, and then it closes with a reprise of Come On In. Well, the dialogue that goes on before this song is really a very wonderful moment in the musical and that everyone who has sort of displayed some arrogance throughout the, the, the musical, the, who, the people who stayed in the end really have a change of heart and they realize that Jesus has come for everyone, the poor, the wealthy, 
uh, the shepherds, Joseph and Mary. It's, it's just a w- very wonderful moment. It really is. And so, uh, well, listen, no more talking. Let's listen and let's watch now. So here are excerpts from The In Crowd. Travelers, come on in for shelter and for rest. Comfy beds and tasty meals are here for every guest. Let's go in, let's go in, let's go in to Bethlehem's Inn. Let the home-cooked meals begin right here at Bethlehem's Inn. Welcome, friends, to Bethlehem. You've come. sir we are looking for a place to stay wow two more guests where are we going to put them don't ask me you'll have to go somewhere else there simply is no more room in this inn for someone of your type there's not really enough room for all of us i was counting on getting the penthouse suite there was barely enough food for all of us at dinner i'm truly sorry But they are right. There is no more room in the inn. We have come so far, as you can see. My wife is in no condition to be traveling. I don't know what to do. Well, I do have a stable out back. You would have to share it with my sheep and cattle, but you are welcome to use it. It's all I have to offer. Thank you, kind sir. That will be fine. Wow! They're going to sleep in the stable? Huh! You certainly would not catch me sleeping in a stable. A person of my station in life has to pay attention to appearances. After all, I am the owner of the largest wool company in Judea. Wow! Ooh! Ah! Impressive! No siree! F.W. Woolworth does not sleep in a barn. Yes! He's got a point! Absolutely! <laughs> Perhaps you people have not recognized me. Or maybe you're just in awe of my fame. You must know that I'm Rock Starling, winner of Israel's Got Talent. Wow! Ooh! Ah! Impressive! When I was still working at the rock quarry, I might have considered sleeping in a barn. But now I'm one of the beautiful people. Yes, she's got a point. Absolutely. Let's face it, folks. There are the haves and the have-nots. And we are the haves. I run the RIRS, you know, the Roman Internal Revenue Service. And there is no way I'm going to get shabby treatment. Certainly are out. 
you're part of the in crowd. That's the best news ever. Wow. Amen and the end. And those were excerpts from The In Crowd, a new 20-minute reproducible musical by Lee and Susan Dangler, their first ever children's musical. We're happy to be the publisher of your first ever children's musical, Lee and Susan. And I said reproducible, and of course most of you know that that means you buy the uh, director's score, which has a CD accompaniment track in the back of it, and you're good to go. It has uh, all, you can reproduce um, the pages in the musical to give out the songs to the children to learn that way. We take photocopying very seriously in the music publishing industry, as you can imagine, but we realize that some of the younger children, this is really kind of a K through sixth grade musical. It could stretch as far as that, wouldn't you say? on the yes. upper end, the upper end, but a lot of those kids that age don't need single books to take home, and it's a budget stretcher for church budgets to have only one kit that they have to buy. And if you're not going to use the accompaniment track, the book, the director's score itself is available separately, so uh, you don't have to buy an accompaniment track, but it's a great value if you are going to use an accompaniment track. And Lee and Susan, talk about uh, the instrumentation that they heard on the uh, the recording. Well, it's, it's very simple. It, it has piano, obviously, uh, flute, clarinet, cello, and the percussion. Absolutely, and and those parts, those instrumental parts, are available as PDFs on the CD-ROM. So if you want to do the instruments live, they can do that, can't they? They can, absolutely. Yeah, which would be a nice touch for those churches that uh, want to do uh, some of the live instrumentation. So listen, Lee and Susan, thank you so much for uh, this contribution uh, to uh, Sacred Children's uh, Musicals. And any parting uh, words you want to share with us before we uh, wrap things up here? Well, we're very excited about this musical. We, it, it tells, obviously, the Christmas story in a really good way, but I really think it has a message that is very applicable to children. And uh, I think they're gonna really be uh, moved by this experience. Absolutely, I do too. And I think they, when they internalize this kind of message and through the, from the mouths of babes for those uh, adults who are sitting in the congregation, I think uh, uh, hearts can be touched. And, yes. uh, and uh, the, the great Christmas message proclaimed once again in a fresh new way. Mm -hmm. So thank you both, Lee and Susan, for being here for this digital session. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely, you guys. And thank you for tuning in once again to an Alfred Sacred Jubilate Music digital reading session for the in crowd. Thanks again.